It's a good question. Um, I mean, you know, there's, there's very interesting research showing uh, how, you know, people who, who are sort of like obsessed with the pursuit of happiness um, tend to be less happy, right? Like, uh, like people who actively are trying to be happy are less happy. Um, but we don't know what the causality is. Uh, I mean, there's some experiments, because you can argue that the reason why they're pursuing happiness is because they're unhappy to begin with, right? Like, like they, they want to get out of the, the hole that they're in. Um, but there are some experimental studies showing that when you, when you, you try to get people to, to, to try to value happiness or maximize happiness, uh, then that does sort of make them less happy. Um, and I think it, it, it is a good question. I don't have a good answer. I, I, I do, but I, I, I share your concern, which is that this tendency to want to maximize the best outcome uh, is not a healthy attitude. Uh, and that's based on research, right? So there, there are people who are maximizers and there are people who are satisficers. And, and, and people who are satisficers, they just want what's adequate for what they need. Uh, and people who are maximizers want the best of whatever. And maximizers are, are almost, they, they can never be happy, right? They, they can never be happy because once you get the car that you wanted, you're looking around to see you know, whether or not somebody else has a better car. And there's always somebody who has something better than you. So, so if you're obsessed with maximizing your, your outcomes, you're always going to be less happy because you, at the end of the day, you can never be the best because there's always somebody out there who's better. Right? So I think that kind of attitude is a very uh, dangerous one to have. Um, and yeah, but I don't know what the best way is to cultivate a, a, a satisfying attitude, right? Like, like you know, to, to have the, the attitude that, you know, yes, there are some things I need, and, and I just want what's, what's, what's good enough. Um, because your, your intuition is actually supported by research. Like, the people who are happiest are the ones who not necessarily have the most resources, although resources matter, but they're the ones doing the things that they have resources for. You know what I mean? Like, like they, they are doing the, the things that they can do with the resources that they have. Like, um, um, but it's, it's what they want to do. Um, so, so it's an important question, I think, is, is how, to, how to manage these attitudes, how to manage these expectations. Um, I think that you know, for some theorists and philosophers, they, their, their perspective on happiness, which I think is a healthy one, is maybe you know, you should think of it as not something to be like pursued directly, but, but something that, that ensues, that, that, that is a side effect of, of trying to accomplish things that are, are valuable and, and, and worthy, right? Um, and maybe that starts with education, I don't know. Okay, um, we've come to the end of the panel uh, discussion. Thank you, panelists. <laughs> Dr. Lim Wei-Xian, Associate Professor Susan Shi, Associate Professor Will Tov, and um, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Ng Wei-Ting. Thank you. And thank you one and all for joining us uh, here uh, this evening. And I think there's some research that says a good night's sleep makes you wake up happy. So on that note, good evening everyone. Thank you.